Hello there and a very good evening to you or a very good afternoon or good morning wherever you are in the world. And welcome along to the Half Yard Sewing Club live Facebook chat. Now come along and let me know that you're there and we always like to know whereabouts in the world that you are, what you've been up to, what you've been making, what you'd like to see. Are you a club member or are you brand new? Maybe this is the first time you've ever actually joined us here on the Half Yard Sewing Club. And if you are, as usual, I'll give you an overview as to what the Half Yard Sewing Club is all about. Um, well, I'm Debbie Shaw and I do a bit of sewing. I do a lot of sewing, actually, and I write a lot of books and I write a lot of projects and I do a lot of sewing magazines and projects for those magazines and I come up with patterns and designs. And this club is basically a way of me being able to work with you, of being a part of um, a whole community of sewing, but bringing you ideas, inspirations, projects, hints, tips and advice and communication. It's all about kind of working with you and, and it, it, this whole community so we all support each other. Um, so if again you've, you've not heard of us before, um, it's a subscription website. Actually you can have a whole month for free. So if you want to trial the Half Yard Sewing Club and have a look at those projects and the hints and the tips pages and the techniques and the extra projects and the block of the month and everything else that's involved in there, you can do for free for a whole month. What you need to do when you register, you'll need to register your name um, and all of your details, but there'll be a, a coupon box where you type in WELCOME in capital letters 18 and then you'll be able to join for free for a whole month. I will put these, if you're watching on YouTube or repeating on, on Facebook, I'll, I'll put those details at the bottom of the screen so you can give us a try. So we've been going since last August. Well over a thousand of you with us now, so hopefully lots of you are going to be with me tonight. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, then do, do bring them on. If I can't answer them or demonstrate what you need to know in this live chat, then I shall be with you again in a month's time. So we'll be able to cover everything there as well. So let me just say some hellos. There'll be a lot of hellos. Hi, Jenny. And uh, oh, how do you get on with your felt rubber? Did you manage to find the felt? Because I didn't answer your message from last time about where I buy my felt from and I answered it today which is a month late, but it was eBay. Um, so you see, I, I told you I'd get back to you at some point. Um, and hi, Angie and Tammy from Alabama. You're making bucket bags today. Post some pictures on the Facebook page of your bucket bags. Want to see what you're making. Um, hi, Anne and Leah Louise from Great Yarmouth. Oh, curled up with glandular fever. Oh, oh, but, oh. Hope you get better soon. Hi Janie and Carol Bennett, uh, you've been making envelope cushions this week, I saw your picture, looking very good. Um, and hi from Margaret and Nalini, what a lovely name. Uh, Debbie, does it auto renew? Uh, yes. Yes it does. Um, if I'm wrong there you're going to get a comment from Olivia in just a second but I'm pretty sure we do. Uh, oh, Jennifer from Staness in Orkney. I've never been there. How lovely. Um, hi, Sarah. Hi, Cathy. Um, Carol from Lincolnshire. Oh, we've been there, haven't we? And Bridget from Belgium. Um, I don't have the Learn to Sew book, but I love your work. But she, oh, well done. Jolly good. Ruth, first time watching you live since joining. Oh, welcome along. Now, just to explain something, I live in a tiny little village in Lincolnshire in an old bakery and the walls are this thick in stone and our broadband connection is not amazing. So I apologise if my words aren't coming out at exactly the same time as my lips are moving. But it's the best that we can do considering the en environment that we're in. So I, I, I hope it's I hope we find it amusing and it's not irritating. Um, hi Anne, hi Julie, hi Laura Lee and oh Julie again and Diane and Catherine I told you there'd be a lot of hellos and Beverly and Jenny all oh, right oh lovely not started oh the business oh it's a UFO Jenny don't don't have UFOs you have to get them finished um Angie's making rabbits but enlarge them lovely Marilyn from North Carolina what time is it there you'll be in the afternoon won't you because you're behind in the time over there um it does auto-renew. Auto Thank you, Olivia. Right, here we... Oh, right, I'm, right. 
we're up to date so all my hello is done we're going to do a giveaway um, previous month I made a whole kitchen set with chicken applique so I'm going to give away an oven glove so at the end of the live chat which normally lasts between about I don't know 40 minutes to an hour or whenever you get bored with me um, I'm going to just scroll through and then stop and somebody wherever you are in the world is going to receive my my little oven glove so I hope you like it we're going to be talking about piping in this hour uh, Brandy and Angie uh, because I had a question on Facebook no I had an email question sorry from the website from Alison Wing so I hope you're watching and if you're not watching live I hope you're watching uh, on, on YouTube or something uh, she said hi Debbie when making a cushion cover with piping can you advise the best way of sewing the piping around the corners to get neat edges so I thought I think we'll cover that for you because that's that's quite an interesting thing piping is lovely I use piping on bags so this is a very fine piping that I've used around the edge of the pockets and all the way around the bags on the backpack that I've made for my builder bag backpack book that's coming out later on this year and even on this one this is from um, half yard bags and purses just a tiny little piece of piping so this is really narrow piping but it just finishes off the edges piping can be used on cushion covers very fine piping like this you'll find it in tailoring you'll find it around um, collars and on pockets and things like that so it, it gives an it gives a nice outline to your work and it, it makes it look professional so this is what we're going to do um, fingers crossed it's me <laughs> oh Amelia oh, oh gosh Ami uh Dobri Vecha Zicheke. Welcome along. Czech oh, you're from the Czech Republic. Yes, thank you. Oh, hello. It's lovely to speak to you. Uh, hi, Jean. First time visiting. And Jenny Harris wants it. <laughs> um, Sarah says, where's the, the grey Czech fabric from? I bought that in John Lewis. Um, it's, a, it's a thick wool, so it's like curtain weight fabric. Um, oh, Nalini is waiting for the giveaway. Hi, Dana. Um, right, we're up to date again. So, what we're doing? Right, um, let me put you onto the top camera. When I change from one camera to another, there's like a blink. So, the screen will go black for just a second and then it'll pop up again. With your piping cord, because you're going to need this to start with. There are lots of different thicknesses and there are lots of different types. So this is the one that I'm going to be using today and it's like, it's almost like washing line, but it is actually a cord. Um, this is the more common type of piping cord. This is a quarter of an inch one. Um, do be careful when you buy them though. It's always nice if you can actually go into a store and feel them because some of these twisted cords can be so lumpy that they're going to show through your fabric. So that, that they won't be a good one to buy. That one's fine. It's a little bit lumpy, but you won't see that. Or the very fine cord that I used on the checked bag was just this one. So that was a quarter of an inch cord. So lots of different types and lots of different materials that they're made from. What you're also going to need is some bias cut fabric. Bias cut fabric if you're going to go around curves. So for instance, with my bag here, this piping goes around a curve, this goes around a curve. And the reason it's cut on the bias is because bias cut fabric has a little bit of stretch. So instead of the grain going up and across like that, it's going diagonally, which means you've got that little bit of give. So when you do go around a corner, it's going to stretch around the corner without puckering. If that was going around a corner on the grain, it would be, you'd have little pleats in there, so it wouldn't work quite so well. However, if all you're doing is putting a piece of piping cord maybe across a cushion cover, if you've got two pieces of fabric and you want to join them together and make a nice finish to them, then it doesn't need to be cut on the bias. It's only bias cut when it goes around the curves. Now to work out how much you're going to need, um, the easiest way to do it, and there's lots of maths and sums involved in lots of different ways of doing it, but you need to measure the circumference. 
So if you measure all the way around, so this one is just over a quarter of an inch, so it's going to be just over half an inch in thickness, and then add to that your seam allowance. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance because it wraps around, there's two pieces of fabric, I'm going to need two seam allowances, which is half an inch. This may make more sense. So when I fold my fabric around here, it needs to be the circumference of the piping plus your seam allowance here. This is a little bit more than quarter of an inch, but I can work with that. When you sew this together, your edges need to be perfectly straight because this is going to marry up with the edge of your fabric for your cushion cover or whatever the project is. So you may need to trim this down. Simplicity do actually do a tool which is really useful. It's like an acrylic block with a groove down the inside and you put the groove over the piping and simply use your rotary cutter to trim off the excess. Maybe a little bit more difficult to trim this down to size without the right tool, but you can do that. That's an easy way of working it out. So then what we're going to do, that's going to be my cushion cover, but we're going to make up the piping first of all, but need, need to say some more hellos first, I'm sure, uh, to Brandy. Um, who won last month's giveaway, which was the bunny. Well done. And uh, she, she says it's adorable. And Lainey and Leah. Uh, Leah really loves the smock cushion, which I've just dropped on the floor. But the blue one's behind me over here. I think you can see that. Um, going to be doing a giveaway on the Half Yard Sewing Club website for that one at some point, for the beige coloured one. Let me know how you're getting on with your smocking, by the way. I'd love to see pictures of the cushions that you've been making. I think it's, it's such a, a lovely technique to learn how to use. And I think what, what you're going to create with it will be absolutely striking. So I'd love to see your pictures. Um, hi, Michelle from Newcastle and Darlene. And oh, hi, Alan. Did you make my faux leather fluming? Oh, did I make your faux leather flamingo? I read that wrong. Did you like my faux leather flamingo bag? I thought it was lovely. And hi, Wendy. First time watching us. Hello. Um, and Jan and Olwyn, I used to have a friend at school called Olwyn. What a lovely name. It's Welsh, isn't it? Uh, Jenny says hi, Kim. Hi. Kim says hi. <laughs> Jenny came to one of our workshops at the NEC. Hey. She remembers you. You, you were trouble. Everybody remembers Jenny. Okay. Zip a foot on the sewing machine. And I'm knocking everything on the floor. So, you don't need anything special, you know, you, most sewing machines have a zipper foot, so we're, we're fine with that. Um, foot pedal on the sewing machine would be useful. Sorry about the noise, I've lost my pedal. And then, I don't usually pin these, I find it easier not to. Wrap your fabric around, and we're going to sew just on the inside quite close to the piping. So I'm on a straight stitch. I'm going to move the needle over to the left hand side. I'm going to switch my machine off and on again because it's not moving at the moment. It's not playing ball. There we go. I'm not going to sew right up against the piping because I'll do that when it goes on the cushion cover. I can go a little bit closer actually. There we go. And then I'm just going to line up the raw edges and so. Try and stop with the needle down when you stop sewing because that'll help you keep your stitch line straight. And just keep going. I'm not worried about this line being wobbly. I'm not worried about it being really, really close to the piping because that'll happen when the piping goes onto your work. The main thing I'm concerned about is keeping those two raw edges aligned because that is going to depict your seam allowance. So just, just keep going. I would normally be a little bit more careful when I'm not being watched by everyone all over the place. I'm trying to get this done quickly. So what have you been up to in your worlds of sewing? You know, Carol with her envelope cushions and your bucket bags. 
And Alan with his flamingos. Apparently sloths or sloths are going to be big. Unicorns are out. Sloths are in. I'm coming back. It's a bit dull just watching it so in straight lines, doesn't it? So have we, have we made anything with sloths? I'd like to bring back the donkey. I don't think we see enough donkeys. Prettier than sloths. Do you know, I think, I think this will do. Because I'm going a bit wonky now. Okay. So it was Alison that was asking about making the corners neat. So I shan't go all the way around the cushion cover, but I'll show you what happens with the corners. And then I'll show you what happens when you overlap when you come to the second part. So what I like to do is to start on the bottom of the cushion cover. So probably that side. And I'm going to start not right from the edge of the bias binding here. I'm going to start a little way in because I need to join these together. So you line up the edges of your tape with the edge of your cushion cover. And again, I find that easier not to pin because by the time you've pinned and then you've unpinned as you're sewing along, may as well have just gone on with it and done it. So again, leave a little bit hanging over the end. I'm going to move my needle over a little bit more now. So I'm sewing just inside the line that I've just sewn. Right. And then we'll come up to the corner. So I'll show you what to do. After I've said a few more hellos. Um, who have we got now? Um, llamas. Llamas. Oh, Jenny. Llamas are so last year. Sorry, llamas, but we're over you it's it's sloth sloths sloths now apparently um cushion covers with indian fabric i haven't got any cushion covers with indian fabric but that's a nice idea um the cutest oh tammy lynn's got the cutest donkey fabric waiting to be used when you've made something with your donkey fabric share it i'd love to see something making with donkey fabric uh, and made a shark hooded towel <laughs> um morning from new zealand oh rose how early in the morning is it in new zealand love to know um alan says just pre-ordered both of your new builder bag books oh thank you very much oh not quite finished yet there, there'll be a few months before they come up but thank you uh is your fabric line available to purchase online i do have a fabric line um which is available to, uh, to purchase online try hobbycraft or try inspirations in preston they've got the whole range there um it's the one with the uh the, the cottage garden so it's got chickens and and it's all pictures of my garden and flowers and things like that um some of it's behind me here so it's pretty florals and it's dragonflies and let me move that we, we will finish this alison promise um so those are the ones that are out at the moment there's one with chickens on and there's one with the cottage on all that kind of thing my next range of fabric will be oh you went all white then let me come back uh we'll be launching um exclusively in hobbycraft at the end of may and then it's going to be available from everywhere including inspirations in preston uh I've, in fact i'm going to be in inspirations in preston i can't remember the date offhand but it's at the end of june and i'm going to be doing some de demonstrations there as well and the bag behind me there is it so it's all in teals and and beautiful oranges and it's kingfishers and ponds and things like that so yeah yeah i do in answer to your question um I want to see exact cushion covers sewing, which is in the pictures of the blog trip to India. Oh, those are the ones I made for my daughter. Yours were the Indian ones, weren't they? Yeah. She's, did we not put pictures on there? I, I think I've got a picture of them. Yeah, I, I, if it's not, I, I thought it was on the blog post. If it's not, I should put some on, on, the, um, on the blog or on, I'll put some on the Facebook page. How's that? Um, sequin in Washington. Wow. 
Um, Marilyn says, can you get the fabrics in the USA? You, they're not available from any stores in the USA at the moment, but you can ship from, if you try Inspirations in Preston, um, then they do ship to the States. I'm not sure what their shipping is, but at the moment there's no distributors in the States. There is one in Canada, apparently, but not in the States, I'm afraid. Hi, Jane. Uh, oh, hi, Alex. <laughs> Jenny's watching while she's washing up. Oh, come on, Jen. Have you got a dishwasher? For goodness sake. Um, right, up to date. So, back to our piping. Because this is for our listen. We need to sew around the corners. So, what I like to do, as I'm approaching the corner, again, I'm just lining up these two pieces. So, I'm coming up to the corner. And I'm going to stop about an inch and a half away. And at this point, I'm going to make a few snips into the seam allowance. So I'm not cutting through the stitches. I'm cutting into the seam allowance. And that means now when I come up to the corner, I'm going to stop sewing this distance away from the edge and bend the fabric round. Um, you won't ever get a perfect 90 degree square corner when you're using piping. It goes round, you, you can't help that. So square corners will be slightly rounded off. But I'm going to pull this around so it's nice and snug. And so just around the curve there. Okay. I shan't do all four corners. I'm actually going to snip this off here. And I'm going to carry on as if I'd got to the end because I wanted to show you this bit as well. So pretend I've gone all the way around and I'm coming back down the final side here. So I've done the three corners. I've got enough piping so that I can overlap it and I'm just coming up to the join here. All right. So now I'm going to cut off the end of the piping level to the fabric. And I'm going to open up a few stitches down here. I'm going to cut some more of that off in just a second. And I'm going to fold the end of my fabric in by at least a quarter of an inch. Right? And then the cord I'm going to chop off inside there. So peel back the fabric and I'm going to cut that off about a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit more inside there. So my piping finishes here, and the end of my fabric is a little bit further on. Then when I come to this end, line up the end of where you cut the piping off. I hope you can see this okay. And I'm going to chop the whole of this off here. Right. And then I can push the piping inside the folded over bit. The two pieces of piping are meeting, but the fabric's overlapping. Then I'm going to sew all the way down. So now I've got a lovely join when I turn that over. Let me see how close you can see that. There's my join, particularly invisible when you're using a patterned fabric. And there's the overlap on the inside. So that's nice and neat. So that's how I do the overlap. Now I haven't finished here yet because I'll just show you when I put the second piece of fabric on top how I'm going to make this neat. Okay. When we've said some more hellos. Because it'd be rude not to because you're all over the place tonight, aren't you? We're all over the world. Um, Helen Sanders, what are you making? I'm not actually making... I'm doing a technique, which is um, putting piping on a cushion cover. I had a, an email from Alison on the Half Yard Club asking how to make corners neat. So that's what we're doing in this one. Um, Kathleen, hello from McHenry in Illinois. Hello. 
Oh, and Brandy's got the fabric from the block of the month. Fabulous. So let, how far have you got with it? And it's not just the uh, the blocks we're making. So behind me here is a cushion cover made with one block of the month. So with a block of the month, we started this in January. So if you join the club now, if you're not a member already, you'll be able to look back to January and have all of those, well, there's four now, um, all of the different blocks. So if you're going to make a quilt, that's the quilt behind me. We give you all of the measurements that you're going to need for the different fabrics. If you want the fabrics, we were doing bundles of them, but I'm afraid we sold out completely. But they're available from Inspirations in Preston, all of those fabrics individually. So if you go onto the Inspirations website and look under Debbie Shaw Fabrics, you'll have the range that I've designed and you'll have this fabric as well, which is a craft cotton fabric. And um, on the website, it'll tell you how much you need. But if you're a little bit daunted by making a complete quilt, maybe it's the very first time, you'll be on block four now. You could just join those four blocks together and make a table runner. You could take one block and just make a cushion cover. In next month's extra tutorial, I'll show you how to make a fabric bowl just using one of the blocks. So I'll try and give you much ideas and inspiration, particularly if you're new to quilting. You know, if, if you're new to quilting, you might think, I don't want to make a big quilt. Quilting isn't necessarily about making a big quilt. You can make little things. You can make bowls and bags and cushions and lots of other things. So I'll try and give you lots of ideas as well. Oh, just to let you know as well, um, there's going to be dressmaking hints and tips on the website every month. This month, just gone on this week, is your full bust adjustment for a pattern. I'm asked so many times to demonstrate a full bust adjustment. It's not the easiest thing to do, but for most of us, it's the most important thing to do with a pattern if you're making a dress or a blouse or a top, because the majority of patterns are made for a B cup. The majority of women aren't a B cup. Good for you if you are, most of us aren't. So you may need to reduce the bust to an A cup. You may to, need to increase the bust to C, D, E, F, G, whatever size you are. So that's the one for this month. There's the full bust adjustment, so you're going to be making the pattern bigger. There's a small bust adjustment, so I'll explain how to make that pattern smaller. And there's a couple of adjustments on hips, on skirts and dresses as well. Easy ways to make the hips wider by keeping the waist the same um, or to make the hips narrow if you need to as well. We're pretty much covering everything on the website these days. It's, uh, it's great. I'm glad you're liking it. Um, hi Gwen and, uh, and Glynis. Hello. Alan's completed two more v-neck shirts. Alan, you're a show off. Took Alan a long time to do a v-neck and he has perfected it and everybody in Alan's family is now wearing a v-neck including the dog. Um, Alan says, my granddaughter asked me to knit a sloth for her last year. Still a UFO. <laughs> Any chance of a sewing pattern for one? Oh, there's a thought. That's on the list. Um, Newton A. Cliff, hello, Mona. Um, and how about a man bag? Oh, yes. Man bags are definitely on the list. And I think it's... I can't remember what month. We had a big discussion the other day about all of the projects that are going to be coming up later on in the year. And man bags and wallets are definitely on the list. Uh, Louise never done piping. Oh, have a, go. have a go on scrap pieces of fabric. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a bag or user expensive fabric on a cushion cover. Just have a play with it. I think it's like putting zips in. Once you've done one, you think, why was I bothered about that? It's really easy. Um, Lynn's made a bag from a totes book. Totes amazing. There's a name for a book, Caroline, if you're watching. Totes, that's good actually, isn't that's it? Good. Totes amazing. Yeah, hey, I'm down with the kids. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get, getting told off. <laughs> um, Jackie and Blackpool. We went to Blackpool. We went to Blackpool when, when the kids were little, do you remember? Um, for a weekend. And, <laughs> and th there were a lot of hen parties and stag nights. And my, my little, my big, well, my youngest, who's very big now, was very little then. And he, he couldn't understand why there were so many police women in Blackpool. He didn't notice they were wearing miniskirts. And he went up the tower and stood on the glass, well, he actually lay on it, straight across on his tummy on the glass brick where you can see straight down to the pavement as we're all inching around it like this because we don't look down. Oh, that was a while ago. Hi, Cynthia. Uh, Anne says, my hubby wants to know if you've locked Bobbin out. No, actually. Don't know, where, don't know where she is. I'm not shouting her at the moment. 
I'll give her a call before we go. No, she's not. What, what it is, is because um, Kim's up with her daughter, Vienna, has only just got back from nursery, and it's all very exciting with Grandad in, in the living room, so I think Bobbin's playing with them. Um, Sharon says, uh, hello, my sewing buddy. Hi! From Hindman, Kentucky. Oh, wow. Love your, love Eat King, your tutorials. I've learned so much from you. Watching your tutorials, I'm hoping that says. Um, the Waveney, oh, the Waveney Valley of the East of England. Oh. Cynthia, what about Humpty Dumpty? Forgot all about Humpty Dumpty. That's a good one on the list. I did your hip adjustment yesterday and it worked out great. Oh, phew, thank you. Um, Angie says, can I ask when the first year is up and the new year starts, we'll be able to access older projects as long as we stay members. All of the projects are accessible for 12 months. So it's the, the year is up in August, but it's not like the whole year previously is just going to be wiped off. So if you joined in August, you'll have the whole year previously. If you joined in September, you'll have till September. So it kind of rolls around for a year. Um, she saved the PDFs. That's a good idea. Um, hope you're keeping love from going. Hi, Karen. Um, oh, there you go. You've, you've got a reply there, Angie. So I'm, I'm so behind. I'm just too busy talking. Um, da -da -da. Right, we're up to date. So let's let's do this again. So let me go over the top. No change there then. And um, this is how far we've got with our piping. So remember, I cut into the seam allowance, bent the piping around the corner, and as you can see, it's not going to be a complete square. So now the second part of my cushion cover goes over the top here. Now you've got two choices. You can feel your way around where the piping is, or you can follow your stitches from this side. Every time I start to sew, I'm moving the needle closer and closer. This is the important one because now I want the needle to be right up against the side of the piping because this is going to be my final stitch line. So let's bring in the machine. I'll just do the corner bit. Okay, and let's move the needle right over as far as it'll go. If you've got a computerized sewing machine, then use the stitch width on a straight stitch. A straight stitch doesn't have a width because it's straight. But normally, if you use the stitch width, it'll swing your needle over to one side or another. So now I've got my needle as far over to the left-hand side as I possibly can. If you don't have a computerized machine, you may have the ability to do that manually. If not, just try and push the needle as far over to the piping as you possibly can. I find it helps as well. I'm, I'm kind of pulling the fabric in from the right. And that helps to get the needle really close to the piping. I don't want to sew into the piping, I just want to sew really close. Now I'm going to deliberately go a little bit awry around here, look. So I'm not sewing very, ooh, I'm not sewing at all. Just to show you how you can correct things if it goes horribly wrong. So again, just lining up the edges, find it easier not to pin. And sew right up to the piping. So let's turn this the right side out, and it's not going to be perfect. Kind of looks all right, but right here in the corner, look, I've got a miss bit. I can see the stitches. It's not as tight as I'd like around the corner. It's not the end of the world. These things happen, and they'll happen to you no matter how experienced you are. So all we're going to do is to turn it back out again, and we're going to sew it again. Who would know when you finished it that you've been over this a few times to get it right? So again, as close as I can this time, keeping all my layers of fabric flat, really close to the piping. So again, take your time with it. Go slowly around the curve if you need to. And you can do that as many times as you need to to get that corner absolutely perfect. So your stitches should be right up against the piping and that's going to make it really neat on both sides. So, 
I hope that's explained it for you, Alison, and I hope everybody else has enjoyed that little tutorial as well. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're almost out of time. Um, if you've got any requests, if you have any questions, if there's anything specific or particular you'd like to see in the next Facebook live chat, then leave a message below here and I'll have a look when we're finished and make note of everything. Um, if you're a club member, of course, you've got your page where you can click through and just leave your messages for me there. Oh, while you're there, if you, if you are quite new, have you seen the Ask a Member page? It's an Ask a Member forum. So um, the, the reason we've done that is because we want you, want you to talk to each other. So okay, me talking to you and you're messaging me, which is all lovely, but I'd love you to join, to, to talk to each other as well. Um, there's Elizabeth and Barbara have been answering lots and lots of your questions, which I really appreciate and thank you for that. You can probably get to those people that have questions before I can, or maybe you know answers. You know, I've had questions about fabric shops in different areas um, or measurements and suggestions. So if just have a look, have a look and chip in if you feel like it, that would be nice. And if you've got a question, pop it on there as well. It'd be nice to hear from you. So, uh, Mavis says, how are you? I'm absolutely fine, thank you very much, I'm having a ball. Um, can we use a collar and cuff interfacing canvas as an interface for sewing bags? There are no rules, you can use whatever you like. Um, if I've got quite a heavy weight of fabric, maybe like my wool fabric that I used on this bag, some of the heavier weights of fabric can be quite a loose weave. So although it's a heavy fabric, and I've got a heavy lining in this as well, I'd still put an interfacing on the back to stop it from moving. So if you've got a loose weave fabric, it's more likely to stretch a little bit. So put your interfacing on the back. Dressmaking interfacing is absolutely fine, and that's going to keep it more rigid. There are different weights of interfacing going all the way up to something that feels like leather. So ideally, if you have a look on some websites, um, like, like you handbag, for instance, they can or cotton patch cotton patch are a good one because they can send you swatches of all of the different weights and they come in about nine inch squares and they're all labeled and what they're used for and you can feel them if you can go into a store John Lewis says a lot of the time have big rolls of interfacing and different types of weights but you can feel it and when you feel what the interfacing is like you can feel how it's going to drape with your fabric but there's no rules to say you can't use dressmaking fabric on bags or anything else for that matter there's no rules to say you can't use two so if you're stuck in between, this is too light, this is too heavy, use two of the light ones. There's nothing wrong with using a heavy weight with a light weight. It's inside your bag. No one's going to see it. So if, it's, if it works for you, then that's absolutely fine. That's a long answer, wasn't it? Um, Leah Louise, how many extra books, extra blocks would you need to fit a super king size bed? Need to do some measuring on that one. I, I would, oh gosh, I'd say another one. One, two, one, two, three. Are we four up, three across? I'd say another one across and another one down, but I'd need to measure that and get back to you. Um, Ruth, thank you, I enjoyed it too. Jolly good. Let's make a simple summer dress. I'm not making a simple summer dress next month, but I'm going to make a simple summer top, which may look something like this, but not knitted, um, without using a pattern. So that's going to be your extra, ooh. Well, it's next month. Shall I get it down and show you? You'll love this one. It's huge. Look at this. You make the handles, you make the bag. It's got the pockets. You can add extra on the inside if you like. And it's seam free, seamless. It's not seamless. The seams hide all the raw edges on the inside. There's no raw edges anywhere around there. So that's going to be coming up next month. But your extra project, because you're going to get at least two projects every month, is going to be um, a patternless top made to fit you. So you don't need to understand patterns. You don't need to buy a pattern. It's just something. It'll fit you. That's what we're going to do next month. Um, never done piping before. Going to have a go now. Jolly good, Stephanie. Glad to be of help. Thank you, Glynis. How to use a rolled hem foot. Yes, actually, I've got a very fine rolled hem foot, which is a quarter of an inch. But I'm going to buy a bigger one because you can do a flat filled seam with a rolled hem foot as well. But let me just. Facebook Live May rolled hem foot or Cynthia. I told you I've got a list. Um, Alan wants a bag with pull out handles. 
And can I share my Facebook Go Lives, please? Feel free. Um, have a nice day. Back so oh, Tammy, you're inspired. Off you go sewing. Um, it is faux leather. It's lovely. Isn't it? Are you going to the NEC at the end of June to um, the Creative Craft Show? Because I'm going to have a stand there with Search Press. So they've got one end, I've got another end, so faux leather will be there. And my fabrics will be there, my new fabrics will be there, and my books will be there. And then we're doing workshops in the middle, but not as many as last time, Jenny. I'm going to do um, how to use a sewing machine, so really basic. And then that drawstring bag that we did last time that everyone seemed to like. I think we're up to date with everybody, aren't we? Okay, so again, if you've enjoyed the session, if you'd uh, like to enjoy more and you're not a member of the Half Yard Sewing Club yet, then um, details are going to be at the bottom of the page on how you can receive your free month. And if you have been a member, it's nice, isn't it? We have such a nice time. I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. And do chip in and do say what you'd like to see, what you don't like to see, what, what, what kind of projects that you'd like to do. I try and cover so many different things. We've got dressmaking, we've got the quilting, we've got bag making. Um, we've had, oh, we've got a giveaway, haven't we? We're done with that. Um, we've had interiors and kitchen wares, oven gloves, tea cozies. I'm trying to cover every type of genre, um, but every, item even a simple oven glove like this has got free motion embroidery and applique and bias binding so there's lots of techniques that i'm hoping that you're going to learn as well so i would like to say to you a big thank you for being club members and a big thank you for watching tonight and i'm, I'm going to scroll now right? i'm going to do the bit oh yes bob oh bobbin bobbin Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Uh, Leah Louise Hogbin, you are going to receive my oven glove. Congratulations. If you message the page, then uh, with your address, we'll get this in the post to you pronto. Bob! Bobbin! Bobbin! Do you want to see it? Yeah. Kim's going to go and fetch her. She's normally, she's normally here, somewhere. And you see a little curly tail wandering around or she's barking at the neighbours or something. She's been very quiet today. Man, it's been a lovely day, I don't know about with you. Uh, we've actually done a bit of weeding in the garden today, me and Kim, so she, she may be outside. Must have fallen out with me for some reason. We did take her on a long walk as well. We are in the middle of Lincolnshire, in, I said earlier, didn't I, in a little stone cottage, um, but we're surrounded by the most beautiful countryside. So we, we went trolling off for a three mile walk this morning in the sunshine. So she may be a bit exhausted. Is she come in? Oh, we come in. Hello. She oh, she was asleep. Come on then, you've got to come and say hello to everybody. Come in. Come on. Come, she come. Bob, Bob in, Bob in. Come on, come on, this is a bit embarrassing now. People are going to think that you're not here. Come in. Come on, sleepy dog. And when are you going to say hello to everybody out there? There she is. Well, say hello. No. Oh, you do look tired. Oh, let me go, Mom. Go on then. So, no, she wasn't locked away. She's been fast asleep. Thank you. Right, that's it from me for tonight. Um, it's been lovely to have your company this evening. Have a lovely Easter if you celebrate it, and I shall see you again in about a month's time. Bye-bye.